Hello everyone, my name is Peter, I'm the Dungeon Doctor. Uh, welcome to my video. This is going to be a little bit different from my usual character builds that I do for this channel. I'm going to call this a kind of Dungeon Doctor does quick builds. Uh, um, so, to kind of introduce this uh, build, this is essentially a reaction to a character build that Treant Monk recently put out. Um, the idea was that he found this combination of abilities, um, extended spell from the sorcerer's magic, uh, from the sorcerer's meta magic, with the uh, spell aura of vitality, and found that combining that with the life cleric's first level ability, they were able to create this really powerful healer build. Um, that was in the first video. I'll go ahead and pop a card up to it there. Triantman goes into a lot of detail about kind of what motivated this. Uh, I think a lot of it was down to how there was a big community reaction to healing spirit and how that was often used as a way to get a whole party healed up to full health between combats. And when that spell got nerfed, he found an alternative way, one that is completely within the rules. Um, and I based a build around it. The uh, the fiend girlfriend, or rather the girl fiend, I think is what he called it. Uh, it's a really great and fun build. Uh, but I think he will admit that it's got problems, mainly because of some really obscure and nonsensical rulings from Watsy. Um, and really, it kind of comes down to how this build gets the spell or a vitality on its spells known list. Um, he basically went into the video thinking there's going to be one of two ways, one of which he yeah definitely began knowing that, yeah, this isn't going to be accessible to everyone, and that was to go with one of the Strixhaven uh, character backgrounds. I think it was the Quandrix background, where in their spells known list, at fifth level, they gain access to Aura of Vitality great spell. The problem is, this can really be seen as very um, setting specific um, character background. Uh, it's obviously a lot more powerful than other backgrounds than you get from most races, uh, from most sources, because well, it gives you spell snow, and most other uh, backgrounds only have a very small mechanical benefit to them, in addition to skills or languages and the like. Um, but going into the build, he did have one other option for getting Aura of Vitality, and that was to go through the Divine Soul Sorcerer. Um, if you pick up levels in Divine Soul Sorcerer, um, the idea is that when you get to third level, you could add Aura of Vitality from the Cleric's spell list, because Divine Soul Sorcerers are able to draw on Cleric spells. The problem is that to get Aura of Vitality, you have to use Tasha's uh, Cauldron of Everything's optional class features, where Aura of Vitality was put on the Cleric spell list. And when he was going through D&D Beyond, he noticed, you know, something a little bit odd with D&D Beyond, and that was that uh, Aura of Vitality wasn't being added onto the Divine Soul Sorcerer's uh, potentially known spells, even though he had optional class features selected. And he thought this was just a bit of oversight from it, uh, from D D Beyond. Turns out it isn't. And apparently despite Aura Vitality being added to the cleric spell list, apparently the intent of the uh optional class features is that spell is now accessible to clerics, but it's not accessible to Divine Soul Sorcerers. Which in my view, that's a bit of a stupid ruling. Um, I think it's uh, it just creates more complications and inconsistencies in the rules, which, you know, uh, I think we've seen a fair few of inconsistencies in the rulings from D&D, &D, uh, not D&D &D Beyond, sorry, but from the game designers. I think Jeremy Crawford in general is fairly consistent, but no game design is perfect, and I think he has made a couple of odd calls. Um, things that come to mind include uh, combining Goodbury with the first level Life Cleric uh, ability. I also think it's some stuff regarding how uh, smiting can work with the monk's unarmed strikes as well, where he said that, well, it's not really a weapon, so you can't use smite. I don't know. 
I find their rulings uh, at the best of times, yeah, bit sus sometimes. So I won't hold it against any DM if they wanted to ignore uh, what the rules designers have said on this and say divine soul sorcerer is a legitimate way of getting or of vitality. However, I know I not to do a kind of gotcha video for Triant Monk or anything like that. He's a great uh, character builder, really inspires a lot of great builds for the community. I was still inspired to see, well, how would you do this if you weren't going to potentially be going into grey areas as far as rules go? And actually, I've come up with a build which I think in a lot of ways is really strong. Uh, it still hangs on that core premise of a character that's able to use Aura of Vitality to really heal up a party between combats. Um, and what's more, I don't think it relies on any source books. Um, it relies on, I think, entirely player's handbook material. I do mention where optional features are helpful to the build. Um, certain spells, certain optional class features... However, I think it more or less follows the rules of written as they were published in players' handbooks, so I wouldn't expect this to be denied at any table, no matter if you're playing in Strixhaven, outside of Strixhaven, or using the optional class features. This will work as written. So, without further ado, uh, I'm going to take, give my own take on this. I'm going to call this build the Guardian of the Party. Um little bit of a twist on Trient Monk's uh, build. This, well, we'll see what the character turns out like as uh, we go through it. But um, it's a, it's got some similarities in how that character build works. But I'm putting my own spin on it. So uh, we're going to make this a quick build. So I'm going to run through this very fast because I don't want to take up a whole hour's worth of editing time. So let's start. We have the Guardian of the Party. We have their race. Um, for this one, actually, I'm going very specifically with custom lineage. There's two things I really want. I want Metamagic Adept. That's going to be giving us access to Twinned and Extended Spell right from level one. Um, I know that when Chris uh, actually took on a spell, he said he could go pretty much any race and it was race agnostic. I think it really benefits from having meta magic right from level one, and I'll get into details on that. Uh, reason we went custom lineage rather than variant human is I really wanted this uh, character to have dark vision because it's going to come in uh, pretty handy. Um, the lineage itself, um, I've got something in mind which will become clear as we get on, but um, this character appears human. Uh, they had a father that was a bard, very well known, quite rich. Um, but we never really knew our mother, and our father never really talked about her, but all we know is that um, we've been gifted magical abilities from her. Uh, we've got great dark vision, and we've actually got uh, more proficiency with uh, spells than uh, even our father does. So uh, I think that's... Yeah, pretty good start. So um, as for our starting ability scores, we're going to put that plus two straight in Charisma. We are going to go pretty much a similar rate to what Chris had. Um, with a 13 in Wisdom, that gets us Life Cleric later. We're 14 in Dex and Con. Um, I know that Chris suggested potentially getting Resilient Constitution as a feat. Um, I think that is generally very good for helping you maintain concentration when you're not picking up con saving throw from the start. With this character, they actually don't worry too much about their concentration saves. Uh, they aren't generally using concentration spells as their go-to. They've got a lot of stuff that they can do that's pretty much non-concentration and just hits. So, uh, as for background, um, a background, I mentioned a rich bard father, so I quite like Noble. I don't want to double up on Entertainer because, as we will see, Level 1, we get Bard. That's going to give us all the proficiency we need for being a entertainer already. So let's get a bit of variety with Noble, I say. Uh, bard, level 1, we get features Bardic Inspiration, good social skills from skills that we can choose, light armor, weapon proficiencies, we start very strong. Uh, 
I'd say pick up any skills from our background and our bard levels, but really, I really like stealth and intimidation on this character. I like stealth on lots of characters. It's very helpful to the party when you're doing stealth checks, but for this character, they're really friendly. They're really supportive of the party, but there's just this little bit of toxicness to them, just this little bit of poison uh, to their character that will slowly see develop over time, and that is where their intimidation comes from. All right, moving swiftly on. Spellcasting. Healing Word, that is the must-have spell. Uh, whatever else we take, we take that. Uh, we've got, we're going to take Cure Wounds, more than likely. Uh, Heroism is good. Dissonant Whispers is good. Tasha's Hideous Laughter is very good as a control spell. I'll get into why soon. Uh, Dissonant Whispers, also really, really good and very thematic for the character. Uh, here's a optional thing. If we have access to it, Silvery Barbs is excellent. Uh, if overpowered, according to a lot of people, uh, we'll grab it if we can, but the build does not rely on it, so we don't need it. Uh, sleep, always very good at very low levels. We'd swap it out later. Uh, I quite like Featherfall as well, um, but you know, pick your favourites from here, uh, pick something damaging, always have Healing Word, and maybe something that's good at control as well. Uh, for the cantrips, uh, pretty much always a must-have for Bard, Vicious Mockery, and uh, I quite like Prestidigitation for flavour. Um, let's go into reason fully spells though. Um, this is very much a support character. They're using Bartic Inspiration with their bonus action. They're using spells with their action. Uh, they will often rely on Vicious Mockery to impose a disadvantage on attacks if it works. Uh, they have the option of twinning that as well to potentially impose disadvantage on a lot of creatures. They'd probably be better twinning, however, uh, Distant Whispers or Tasha's Hideous Laughter or Heroism, as that is essentially giving them two first level spells they can use right at level one simultaneously. It'll have a huge impact on the battle when either one or both hit. There goes my, there goes my phone. Right, back on. Uh, yeah, really big impact. It'll only be once, well, twice a day that we could potentially do that. But, um, oh, the one really big hitter that we want is we keep a spell slot spare for Healing Word and a Metamagic spare for uh, using Twin Spell of that. Because at low levels, when you have party members starting to go down, it's bad, but you can pick them up with Healing Word. What's better than one Healing Word, though? Two and you are able to get two downed party members right back up from zero hit points, and that feels brilliant. We have essentially, with this character, ruled out uh, TPKs unless we're the one to go down, because this is a very efficient way of keeping a party going when we're in that TPK situation. So it's really, really, really helpful uh, to have that right from low levels and very on brand for this character who is all about protecting the party and making sure they don't get damaged or hurt, I should say. Uh, and they're just so supportive and protective and they just want to keep everyone safe. Let's keep going. We are on to level two, Bard. Uh, nothing new to say on the spells, but we get Jack of All Trades. Nice. Makes us pretty good at everything. And we also get Song of Rest. This is actually getting into those features that we will be really good at later. But from even low levels, we're able to make our short rests that much more effective by throwing in an extra D6 of healing whenever we do take a short rest. Lovely. Uh, that will really help make sure that we're getting uh, plenty of health, uh, even at low levels. Level 3, Bard 3. Uh, expertise, pick what you want, but again, following earlier discussion, stealth and intimidation. I like the idea that this character is you know, very caring for their character to the point that they're unsettling, so very intimidating. And occasionally, you know, they'll just kind of sneak up out of nowhere. They've got that expertise in stealth, and then suddenly they use prestidigitation to uh, clean off your dirty clothes or something. It's um, helpful, I guess. Um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. But more importantly, Bard College. Going College of Law, people can probably see a mile away why I'm doing that, but we'll get to that later. Uh, with that, College, though, we get three extra skill proficiencies. 
grab what you want. Nothing important here, but uh, good ones are perception and insight, I think. Uh, always helpful. Um, as for features, we are getting cutting words. Um, it's a great combination here where cutting words and vicious mockery both work really well together. Vicious mockery puts a disadvantage on the enemy's next attack. If that attack still hits, the chances are it hasn't hit by a huge amount because they've hit it with disadvantage, so odds are it's a just about a hit. Throw on cutting words with that and you are pretty likely to negate the attack. So really, really good combination. And the only thing better than being a strong healer is a healer that can stop the damage being caused in the first place, I say. Um, second level spells. Now, this is why I feel is a must-have for this character, but it is an optional class feature, and that is Aid. In Tasha's Cauldron and everything, bards were able to grab Aid as a spell, and it is so good on this character, like, phenomenally good. Um, if we can't get it through this, it's worth taking more levels in Life Cleric so we can get access to Aid, because what Aid does on this character is it increases the character's maximum hit points for for three party members, I should say, by five. And when you upcast it, you get an extra five maximum hit points for each level you've upcasted by. So really, really good. And because we took Metamagic at level one, we've got an extra uh, trick bar sleeve. Because with our other Metamagic that we haven't really used up till this point, we've got Extended Spell. If we just spend one of those sorcery points at the end of a adventuring day before we take a long rest and we have a second level spell slot left, suddenly we've got aid lasting for 16 hours. That'll last right for our long rest. Great if we get interrupted at all. But then in the morning, if we're setting out straight away for adventuring, well, we've got aid already on our characters. And I know a lot of characters would even cast aid at the start of a day. So really... In a lot of ways, we've just saved ourselves a spell slot with that. Really, really good. Really strong combination. And if you are ending a long rest with a second level spell slot and a sorcery point, it is a no-brainer. Just do it. Um, but if we can't get that spell, and obviously we can train out other spells as well, I think Detect Thoughts is pretty good, mostly for flavour, although it's a great utility spell. We a bit unsettling. We maybe a bit suspicious of our party members and what their feelings are about our good nature and our uh, somewhat possessive attitude towards them. Um, so that's nice. But also Shatter is really good. Um, I haven't mentioned it here, but Invisibility, always really, really good also. Okay, I think then we are going to get on to... I am just scrolling through my notes... Yes. So, level 4, really not much more to mention on top of the last level up. Bard 4, uh, with a bard, I find it really hard to argue for taking a feat at level 4. I think taking a ability score increase is always the best call for them, because that plus 2 is going to make all their spell saving throws better, and gives them that extra bardic inspiration, which is so good, especially for when we get to level 5. Speaking of which... Level, oh dear. Problem solved. Speaking of which, level five. Uh, main thing, third level spells. Some really great spells to grab here. Hypnotic Pattern is pretty much a must-have. Great control spell. I mentioned we weren't really worrying too much about concentration, but if we are going to concentrate, this is probably the one we want. Uh, Dispel Magic is really nice as well. Uh... I think Catnap is also pretty good, but it will depend on your party and whether you've got a lot of characters who rely on a short rest. So fighters, warlocks, monks, if you've got them in your party, I think definitely get Catnap because everyone's going to love you for it. Bardic Inspiration, that returns on a short rest, and we've just increased that to four Bardic Inspiration die per a short rest. So we're able to really use Cutting Words a lot and really help mitigate a lot of that damage. Good stuff. Right. And finally, Bard 6, which I think everyone could tell was coming. Uh, we gain 
magical secrets. And of course, this is how we're going to grab Aura of Vitality. It's completely rules as written. Uh, Aura of Vitality is on the Paladin spell list, so we can pick this up from there. Uh, even clerics, if you're just going purely rules as written without optional class features, can't get this. So this would have been the only way outside of Paladin to get it. Um, so we can combine that with extended spell, yep, to double the length of time that that runs for. And as uh, Triant Monk describes in his video, which I am going to go ahead and say there's another card here for that. Uh, it's over here. Um when you use extended spell in this way, and I have just realized my thing is over on the wrong side. There we go. Right. When you use extended spell on this, it takes what's originally 20d6 healing that happens over the course of a minute, makes it 40d6 healing that happens over two minutes. If you've got time between encounters, this is great. Um, the average, I think I've calculated this correctly, uh, would give us 140 hit points. Office is falling apart. Right, let's keep going. Um, I won't say more about it. It's a great combination. Full credit to Triant Monk on that, and I am just running with it. However, for our second magical secret, it's really tough. I think it's hard to argue against taking Counterspell. We've grabbed it at level 6, which is pretty good time to have it. It's not level 5, but it's close. And as a bard, we're really good at Counterspell. Uh, we can add Jack of All Trades to it to give us that extra half proficiency bonus to our attempts. We've got a pretty good Charisma as well, so I think at this level, uh, oh, does it round down or up for Jack of All Trades? Well, it's probably going to be at least a plus six on our checks, which gives us a fair chance of Counterspelling anything higher than the third level as well. So really happy to have that on the spell list. If you are feeling that bit more inclined to really look after the party members. I mean, you've probably got a good measure on how good you are at stopping them from going to uh, death at this point from using double healing word, for example. But I think Rivervi is a very strong runner-up, and I would not question if people went for that instead of counterspell on this character. All right. Lastly, and to kind of complete that combination, we hit level 7, and we're going to take that level in Life Cleric now. And that adds a lot of extra healing to our character. Uh, it adds an extra 100 uh, healing on top of Aura of Vitality when we cast it. This is a third level spell with one meta magic point, And we are getting 240 hit points of healing. Um, because we're a uh, level 7 full spellcaster, we have got, I believe it's three... Uh, third level spell slots and we've definitely got at least one fourth level spell slot as well so we can do this a few times a day as well this is our big move and it's great um, let's see I think it's well worth using our higher level spell slots to upcast it as well if only because we'd maybe use our third level spell slots uh, to cast something like hypnotic pattern which doesn't really get any upcast into it so uh Use the high level ones, get that extra healing, and then save your third levels for those control spells. Um, in addition, from Cleric, though, we. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I should also say, as a full spellcaster, if we use a fourth level spot, uh, slot on aid, we get 15 hit points. Really strong stuff. And because we're able to heal so much using Aura of Vitality, the fact that we've got such a high hit point maximum doesn't really matter. Uh, when we come to taking short rest, because normally a short rest isn't going to uh, necessarily help you get back to that hit point maximum. But with Aura of Vitality, no problem. We are all operating at full health, full maximum health, I should say. Um, other stuff we get from Cleric, though, we get that uh, half plate and shield. We've got the plus two to dexterity, so we max out an armor class of 19. This character is very good at stealth, though, and I think it's probably well worth getting a breastplate and shield instead because being able to sneak into situations as this character is just very helpful um and lastly we have got uh bless as a spell uh really good concentration spell we can just drop some low level spell slots on that 
And honestly, I mean, it's not great if our concentration gets dropped with Bless, but it's a low-level spell, and it doesn't hurt quite as much if our concentration does drop with that. So I don't mind too much. Um, although, interesting thing, try and cast Bless on yourself as well as your allies, because Bless will help your own concentration saving throw. So it kind of it gets this... Um, it's this self-fulfilling uh, spell that's really nice. Um, also... Grab Guidance, because um, that extra d4 is always nice on skill checks uh, when you're able to cast it beforehand. And with Jack of All Trades added to that, you're going to be really good at all round, at pretty much all spells. All right, now this is where we got to. Um, we have, to this point, been really good at healing our allies and a bit intrusive, a bit intimidating, and suddenly we're really, really healing them well. And there's been a bit of question about why is our character like this? What's kind of driving them to be so protective and possessive of our precious party? And that's going to be our level eight. Dip. We're going to pick up Sorcerer One. Bit like it with Triant Monk's build, he also went sorcerer. He went down the wild magic route, kind of this slightly crazy uh, sense to the character that they were building. We've gone for Draconic Soul, however. Uh, in particular, I quite like the fire um, it, dragons for this, so that would be either your uh, go dragons or your red dragons as a heritage. And yes, our mother. Um, our mother was a dragon. And so we are the terrifying offspring of the bard and the dragon that we all hear so much about. And this is kind of what drives our character. Um, dragons, known for hoarding things. Bards, known for being just these great social animals. Put them together, what have we got? We've got a character who hoards their friends and wants to look after them no matter what. They don't want them to get damaged. They don't want them to get broken. They want them to last forever and ever and ever. So, with that unsettling thing out of the way, uh, we are a dragon. Um, I wish that the features worked better for the character, and if we're honest with this build, Divine Soul is probably the better way to go. And I think Dreamt Monk made a similar comment that Divine Soul is pretty much the right way to go with that character too if they're getting Strixhaven stuff available to them. Um, but I think we get a lot of Draconic Soul, really. Um, in terms of flavour, it's great. Um, we will make use of that fire heritage later, quite a bit later. Um, but we are going to grab Shield. Uh, we're going to grab Absorb Elements. Uh, something I don't mention on the uh, document here is that we get an extra plus one to all our uh, hit die rolls when we level up, so that's nice. We aren't sacrificing too much in the way of health by taking a large sorcerer dip. I mean, we've only been getting d8s on everything so far, but you know, we've got aid, we've got a lot of healing, we're pretty healthy. Um, and yeah, the two must have spells shield and absorb elements. We want to really protect ourselves, it's going to double down on our armor and make us pretty tanky as well. Um, absorb elements when. Armor class isn't going to do it for you, and you've got elemental damage coming at you. For the cantrips, I really like Firebolt. It's going to combine well with our heritage later, but we can get, I think it's four cantrips at this level, so Firebolt is really good. Ray of Frost is good. Uh, both of these twin really well as well as we get to high levels. I think in the next... At this point, they're all doing either 2d10 or 2d8, so twinning that is nice. And yeah... Firebolt twinned, decent damage, Ray of Frost twinned, a couple of debuffs on speed on two different enemies, really nice. Uh, Shocking Grasp, I think this is good in an emergency situation, where you've got uh, someone that's been crowded around by two creatures, run in, twin Shocking Grasp, and you take two sets of reactions away. I think taking a reaction away is better than a disengage if you can, because it makes the whole party able to use that disengage, which is great. If we hit, that is. So, you know, it, there is risk with that. All right. 
talked enough about uh, taking Sorcerer 1. Let's keep going. Sorcerer 2, we gain two more meta magic points. Really, really needed at this point because that's going to be something that can fuel the rest of our extended spells um, for casting Aura of Vitality. I should say at level 9, we get 5th level spell slots, so we keep accruing these high level spell slots that we can use on Aura of Vitality. And every time we do, the additional hit points you get from upcasting a spell uh, comes through from Life Cleric, because I think it's every time you... Uh, let's see. Life Cleric gains additional, like, a plus 1 hit point for each time you heal someone if you upcast it. So because we're doing that 40 times, that's effectively an extra 40 uh, hit points every time we use it. So I think I may have miscalculated some of the information in the document there. But we're getting a lot of healing, and that's the main point. So um, also aid, great for upcasting too, really increasing those hit points. Um, nothing new in terms of spells. I think with a sorcerer, well, if we take a level 2 sorcerer, we're probably going to swap out when we get to level 3 sorcerer, so not even worth mentioning what we take there. Um, and yeah, I think we should also say with meta magic too, we're at this point where we're able to start taking our spells and converting them into spell slots. This is great for fueling twinned cantrips. It's great for fueling our extended spells. Very nice stuff. And I think there's particularly a lot of spells in sort of second level spells that we wouldn't necessarily be using a lot of. We'd probably just use first level spells and the later level spells for like third level for hypnotic pattern and later level spells for uh, healing. So I think definitely worth converting your second level spells. All right, level 10. We're getting close to the capping stone of level 12, but let's see what we get. Level 10, we keep going sorcerer. We're going to go sorcerer for a while, actually. Um, but the important thing is we get two more meta magic options. And for this, subtle spell, wonderful spell, makes us the best counterspell user, actually, because if we can counterspell something and knock a counterspell ourselves, brilliant. And we got the highest level spell slots that are available to us. So we're always able to use counterspell at a very high level. Really useful stuff. Um, I think that's a must-have. I also think uh, careful spell is probably in the must-have as well. We've been relying a lot on hypnotic pattern for shutting down enemies. Careful spell takes hypnotic pattern and makes it so good. It takes all the friendly fire out of it, and that's a big problem with the spell. Now that that's taken away, though, it doesn't matter where we are in the initiative, we can drop careful spell and really lock down enemies, even when we've got our players in amongst them. Um, distance spell and empowered spell are also pretty good options. Empowered spell is going to be great when we get some blasty spells later, but distance spell is great because we've got spells like Revivify and Heroism on our spell list, and being able to cast those at a distance are great. Heroism being able to cast at a distance is good because it's usually associated with negating fear effects, and if we can't move towards our party members to use Heroism, it's not going to work for us. But if we can cast it at 30 feet away on an ally who's frightened, and maybe we're both frightened, then this makes it great way to negate that frighten effect on everyone um and also revivify we can revivify someone who's just been downed without getting ourselves into danger as well that's if we took it instead of counter spell though um second level spells there's a few nice ones here uh, i think levitate's a must have because it just twins so so nicely um it's one of those spells where when you twin it you can either potentially take two enemies out of a fight if they don't have a ranged option and they're light enough. Uh, you can also use it to airlift two allies out of range as well, particularly if they've got good ranged attacks. And you can even mix a match. You can uh, point a, an enemy and an ally to kind of get a mix of the two. Very versatile uh, when you're twinning it. Uh, for flavor, I really like Dragon Breath. We've got that Dragon Heritage. I think going with that's pretty good. And actually, if we can maintain concentration it and upcast it to quite high levels, we've got a pretty nice blast that we can use on our actions if we want to maybe save uh, metamagic and our spell slots otherwise. 
it could be useful. It is mostly here for flavor, but invisibility as well. Uh, we've got very high level spell slots and invisibility upcasts great because every time you upcast it, you get an extra target for it. And at this level, I think you could probably make the entire party invisible. So very well worth having. All right, level 11. We're a, a sorcerer of four at this point. Get that last ability score improvement to get us up to a full 20 charisma. Our Bardic Inspirations are now five times per short rest, so we're getting that cutting words happening really often, and we also have access to sixth level spell slots. Uh, in terms of spells, nothing new from the last level. Level 12, though, uh, Sorcerer 5, this is kind of our capstone. Third level spells, Fly, you know, it's mostly here for flavor, but really I think it's a must have. We can upcast it to make four characters flying, which Typical party will often have four characters, and so we can get the whole party flying now. And we can even extend it to make it up to 20 minutes, so really, really, really useful. Uh, great utility, pretty good in a combat as well, if we're just facing melee uh, opponents as well, if we can just make the whole party fly. Um, if we did cast, uh, grab distance spell, then we'd be able to cast this on lots of people at distance too, uh, because fly is a touch spell, so you know in the middle of combat you might not be able to upcast it on everyone that you want to without distance spell. Um, anyway, fireball. Uh, come on, uh, if we've got the possibility of taking fireball, even though it's quite high level, it's maybe worth getting. It also combine well with our next level feature as well, which is elemental affinity, which will give us a bit of a boost to the damage, and also this would probably be why I'd take Empowered Spell, but you know, it's not... Uh, it, there may be a blaster in the party already, in which case it's not that uh, necessary at that point. Um, haste is really good too. Um, even at this level, a Twinned Haste can be very useful if we've got two party members who'd really benefit from it, so worth keeping in mind, although it is a bit of a risk, particularly since we haven't got much protecting our concentration, so... Use it with care if you do want to go for the Twin Haste option. Uh, however, I think probably the second must-have I'd have, trade out something from an earlier level, but grab Fear, because we've got Careful Spell, we can use that with Fear to not affect our allies and just affect enemies, making that and Hypnotic Pattern two big guns that this character can use, and not worry about Friendly Fire. They come of complement each other as well. Enemies who are immune to Charmed might not be immune to Fear and vice versa, so that gives us a couple of options for shutting down enemies. Um, and also we still have Levitate from earlier, which doesn't rely on any uh, immunities except for how heavy a creature is. So we've got a lot of ways to shut down enemies. And finally, uh, beyond level 12, um, we're we do want to comment on level 13 just because that gets us Sorcerer 6 and Elemental Affinity. That gives us a plus 5 damage bonus to our fire spells because that damage bonus is equal to our charisma. And this means that actually at this level we're able to match Adrian Monk's baseline damage, which is the damage you can get from casting Eldritch Blast in addition to Hex and having the invocation Agonizing Blast. Um... I think the damage that does is 42 damage on a single target. Meanwhile, this one does 43 damage on average, not taking hit rates into account. Um, but that is spread between two targets, so it's not a one-for-one -one comparison. I will say it's defensive. It doesn't need concentration, unlike Treant Monk's baseline, so we could combine this with something like Fear or Hypnotic Pattern and not have to drop our concentration to maintain our damage. Um, and also, uh, we can spend a metamagic uh, point to gain fire resistance as well, which, you know, depends on the, the scenario we're in, but I think that's a useful option to have. Um, and that pretty much concludes the build. Uh, we're all the way at uh, level 13 with that, and really it's just a case of where would we go from there? Um, from here, 
I think we could either take it further with Sorcerer or further with Bard. I'm a little bit salty about the fact that we can't get to 14th level Sorcerer and get our Draconic Wings, but we have got Fly, uh, which we can cast to pray consistently. So we can fly. So it's not that big a sacrifice. I think Bard might be the way to go, though, because that lets us pick up more magical secrets at higher levels. I think it's 10th or 11th level, uh, which we can get before we get into the high levels. And I haven't had a chance to look at uh, combinations, but there's going to be something there that we can use in combination with our meta magics that is busted and broken at high levels. I don't know why it is, but it's going to be good. So we'll have to maybe just let the comment section suggest what would be some good combinations at those higher levels. However, I think that pretty much wraps up our build. Um, to give an overview, though, this character, we've got a terrifying offspring between a bard and a dragon who has decided to claim a party as their personal property. They've got more than enough healing to uh, keep a party completely topped up between battles. Uh, we also have aid, which can let us just increase their maximum hit points for 16 hours per casting, um, meaning that we can really take advantage of that extra healing that we do. Um, cast a 7th level by the time we get to uh, these late levels, we are able to increase hit point maximums by 30. I think we'll have a very healthy party. Um... We also, this is a feature we've had since very low levels. We have got Healing Word, which we can twin. Doesn't matter what level we're at, the ability to bring back two allies at once from zero hit points will always be clutch. And we've been able to do that from level one, and I think it's a tool that we'll be glad we have throughout our careers. However, if things do go badly wrong, we could grab Revivify as well instead of Counterspell. However, I think probably better than Counterspell is... Um, uh, sorry, better than River Fight is just stopping the damage as well. We are probably one of the best Counterspellers in the game. We should take advantage of that. Um, we've also got a lot of things that we're combining together, including Cutting Words, Twin Vicious Mockery, potentially Silvery Barbs, if we can't use Silvery Barbs and Cutting Words together. Um because they both use reactions. However, we've got a lot of tools for being able to minimize damage, counterspell to stop uh, spells being cast, uh, dispel magic to lift effects on our uh, allies. We have a lot of tools at our disposal just to stop that damage happening in the first place. We'll have a very healthy party, and even at, the, at higher levels, we can even do some decent damage when we aren't doing anything to protect our party. Um, so, I think in terms of other options we could have gone, uh, if Tasha's optional class features were available, another option is just going straight Life Cleric, picking up Aura of Vitality and maybe having extended spell through Meta Magic or maybe a small dip into Sorcerer. I actually think this build is a bit better for going Bard, though, because it just gave us so many more tools for protecting our party. And I think it's always going to be better to have a a healer who can prevent damage as well as heal a lot of damage than just heal damage. So I think that pretty much concludes my build. Um, another big shout out to Trient Monk for inspiring this build and giving me really something to jump off on. I really like my take, uh, my kind of spin on what he did, and I think that pretty much concludes it. Cheers to Chris, cheers to everyone for watching, and I would like to invite everyone here to please like and subscribe. This is a new channel. It will go a long way. And if you like this video, I'm trying to post videos on a weekly basis. And yeah, I hope that you can uh, see those. My insulation foam is falling again. So that is a good time for me to stop. Cheers, everyone.